Hey there, it is Valentine's Day, V-Day, and I happen to be playing V-Rising. And I've actually got another, probably slightly longer video planned for the game Timberborn coming up, but in the meantime I've been distracted by V-Rising. I was just kind of inspired to do a short video about this. So here we go. When you first start the game, you can choose to do either a private server where you can play single player or with your friends, or you can join a public server. And since this is my first time, I decided to just do a private server. And after you've chosen your server and you've loaded in, you're going to create a character, and that character will be specific to the server that you're playing on. So if you play on another server, you'll create a new character. And the character creation process is pretty quick and easy, which is kind of refreshing. Um, you know, you can just customize the look of your character, and that's about it, and then you're off. You're going to choose between two spawn points, uh, one that's going to be on the east side of the map and one that's on the west side of the map. I ended up choosing the one that's on the west side of the map, and I just kind of started wandering around and trying to look for resources, and I was following the in-game tutorial, which is pretty easy to follow and very helpful, and I would recommend following it rather than just trying to figure it out completely on your own. My initial impressions just wandering around is that the world is very interesting to look at, and it feels very alive, uh, both, both with the changing of the day and the night cycle, and also there's a lot of wildlife, and humans and other monsters and stuff just kind of roaming around like sometimes you'll be walking down a path and you'll just come across like a group of guys fighting another group of guys and I like that kind of stuff because it's almost like environmental storytelling you know where you just kind of imagine what led up to that point and now they're there fighting and it's kind of cool, you could like hide out in the bushes and wait for the fight to end and then go over and see if there's any loot left over. I don't want to get too off track here, but I just wanted to specifically point out that the world is very pretty to look at and interesting and, and it feels vibrant. And in addition to that, it seems like it's a pretty vast world. Uh, I have only played about three hours so far, so keep that in mind as you watch the rest of the video. And one more thing I wanted to point out about the map is that if you hover over these different locations, it'll tell you what kind of loot you can get there, which is pretty cool. So you can kind of scout out ahead of time, you know, if you need something specific, you can figure out approximately at least where you need to go to get it. So to start off with, I just wanted to show my base, which is a little bit pathetic right now. It can hardly be called a base, but you can see I've got a few wooden walls up here and I've got a castle heart, which is what you need to start being able to build. It's very similar to a tool cupboard or a TC in Rust. If you've ever played Rust, you've just got to keep it. There's like some upkeep that you have to put into it to keep your, your base from decaying. Right now, I am working on expanding my walls, and in order to do that, I just gotta clear a little bit of the stuff that's in the area here, like this tree and this rock. As a vampire, you have to be careful not to go into the sunlight, so you may notice like I'm trying to stick to the, the shade for the most part here since it's daytime. Now, in order to build walls and items, you need to build foundations. And in order to do that, you need the proper ingredients, and once you have them, you can select it, and it's just sort of a square you place down. And then once that square is down, then you can, it allows you to place more walls and um, different items that you may want to build inside the base or to make the base stronger. Overall, I'm really impressed with the, the base building. It's really smooth and easy and intuitive and just kind of fun. And I feel like I've only just begun to explore, you know, the possibilities of what can be done. But even just in the early stages, like, I didn't really research how to do this. I just kind of tried it, and it seemed to make sense. So that's a really good sign for the design of the game. 
The last thing I want to show here is just a few minutes of the gameplay. So there are these quests that you can get, and um, so I enabled one of the quests, and I am trying to track down this wolf. And the reason I'm trying to track down the wolf is I need its blood. I need a, it's a specific kind of blood, and this wolf has it. So I am tracking it down, and you'll see how it unfolds here. And unfortunately, I didn't have my in-game mic on, but there were a lot of moments of panic and laughing and joy. So, um, yeah, you'll see it unfold here. This is pretty crazy here, so all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a treant has appeared and is now fighting both the wolf and me at the same time. And now here comes some humans with an apparent death wish. So now we have the treant, we have the wolf, we have the humans, we have the sunlight, it's getting very chaotic. And this is all working out beautifully for me because the treant is still over here whooping on the wolf. So now I can come back in and get that blood. So now that we have that blood, it unlocks a new power for us, and I believe it also unlocks some new abilities in the crafting area. Not sure about that, but anyway, that's all I wanted to show you, and I will say that even after only having played for three hours, I'm pretty optimistic about it, and for only $20, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I should mention that normally I wouldn't necessarily recommend a game that's still in early access, but the game is already very polished. Like, it's a lot more polished than like AAA releases sometimes, so um, that's partly why I feel good about it. The community seems really excited about the game, and the developer, it's an indie developer, which I like. I always like supporting the, the littler guys. And they seem really responsive, and um, they will be releasing a big update, a free update for the game in May. So that's partly why I got the game now. I figured it would be a good time to get it and kind of get familiar with it before the big update comes out. Thanks for watching.